Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh This part, this is of course part 2 for the video uh, We'll talk in this part about the views of Noam Chomsky as you see clear in this video regarding the concept of meaning uh, First of all, before we talk about the details uh, about the attitude, I mean the, the ideas or the views uh, of Chomsky regarding meaning or how meaning is treated uh, by generativist or by uh, uh, cognitivist. So it is important uh, here first to start with a, a brief uh, introduction for cognitive grammar because you know cognitive uh, semantics is a um, theory which is a part of cognitive grammar here. So cognitive grammar, I mean, in general, which is a linguistic theory, uh, sees, looks at language as an integral part of cognition. Well, the cognitive content uh, for Chomsky, uh, for cognitivists in general, has a certain structure. It is referred to as spacey grammar. Uh, for Chomsky and other cognitivists, the basic function, by the way, here, I mean, if you just follow up, I mean, all these ideas starting from Cesare and uh, then Halliday. So, the uh, focus is what of the uh, structure, I mean, of being the component here and the function of language in general. So, the basic function of language is what to symbolize, what to symbolize uh, conceptualization by means of phonology here. So here we have a sort of conceptualization uh, for them, as you know. Very well, a deep structure here is in charge for the meaning. You see that when it is represented, transferred, I mean, to the surface structure through the phonology, by means, I mean, of phonology. That is why your grammar is seen uh, as inherently meaningful or symbolic component of the theory. Yeah, and here, where uh, we have a sort of uh, conceptual terms here, you see that. Yeah, then grammar for them uh, is the symbolic component, you see that. Well, um, it links semantics uh, viewed in conceptual terms and phenology. There is a link between the semantic component here and phenology or the surface structure. This pairing of forms... I mean, self-structure and meaning, which is the depth, sets up connections between established patterns of neurological units or activity and serve as templates for categorizing expressions. Now we talk about semantic or cognitive semantics. Uh, as you will see here, Uh, semantic, you see that theory is a part of cognitive grammar which identifies meaning with conceptualization, the structures, it refers to the structures and processes which are part of the mental experience. So here they talk about the mental experience. So uh, how does it operate? It operates with an encyclo the EDQ view of meaning, not recognizing a clear boundary between linguistic and... Um, so there is no uh, clear boundary, there is no separation between the linguistic and the extra linguistic words as it was separated or as it was viewed as, as separate elements or worlds by some uh, uh, schools of thought. That is why here, for example, here you see that uh, so uh, everything that is not about any entity and yani for Chomsky, he says that everything that is known about any entity, about any word is allowed to contribute to, to its meaning. So the meaning is the product of the knowledge that we have. By the way, this is an innate knowledge. Uh, so that is why lexical items 
are therefore polysimous. You see that? And for them, uh, lexical items are polysimous and analyzed as a network of related sense, uh, senses. A uh, central idea here or concept advocated by uh, uh, this type of uh, schools or about cognitive grammar is how a conceptual content is uh, construed. So the construal of a lexical item, according to them, depends on several factors, including the cognitive domains in which it appears, for example, space, time, color, and variations in perspective and silence. By the way, Chomsky uh, suggested uh, the term uh, cognize. You see that written with uh, uh, cognize. Sorry, or even, yes. Cognize is all written with S. There is a misprint here. As an alternative to no. For uh, native speakers, you see that, they say speakers are said to cognize not only the linguistic facts, which they consciously know, you see that, but also the mentally represented rules from which these facts derive and the innate principles underlying these rules. Now, uh, we talk about the cognitive approaches to meaning here. By the way, in contrast to Cesar and Firth, mentalist and cognitivist, uh, the most famous of these is Chomsky, upheld different views concerning that we will see here. Uh, the fundamental, you see that distinction or difference, distinction between body and mind. This is the first thing that you have to study here. There is a distinction, fundamental distinction between body and mind. You see that. Well, or on the mind and its structure, also mind and structure. So according to Chomsky, if, if we cut these three lines from Chomsky, he says that linguistic and mental processes, uh, here in this quotation, you can read it. So linguistic and mental processes are virtually identical. Language providing the primary means for free expressions of thought and feeling, as well as for the functioning of the creative imagination. For on the human mind has a certain structure, a certain ways of operating, which in turn determine the structures and processes of language itself. Uh, according to Chomsky, the program of cognitive linguistics is a proposed a distinction between, as we have said earlier, and this is one of the major uh, views or ideas uh, proposed by Chomsky, deep structure and self-structure. So you see that uh, the deep structure was assumed to have a mental reality closely related to meaning. And uh, if we, of course here, you see that if we might, I mean, uh, mental processes, so it is the deep structure, as you see here, it is the deep structure underlying the actual utterance. Uh, a structure that is a purely mental. Yani, a deep structure purely is what is a mental structure and it conveys the semantic content of the sentence. This is quoted from Chomsky, 1966, page 35. The other important thing is that, as uh, it is clear here, he also suggested that the deep structure is what is uh, universal. So uh, for him, the deep structure, you see that, expresses meaning, uh, which is common to all languages. Meaning is common to all languages. So it is a claim being a simple reflection of the forms of thought. Yani meaning is a reflection of the thought. For him, mental processes, you see that, are common to all Norman, to all normal humans, because they are common. So it is claimed being a simple reflection of the forms of thought. 
So these uh, processes, mental, are normal. Uh, for this reason, languages may only differ well in the manner of expression, but not in the thought expression. And the thought is similar in all natural languages, but differences found in languages only in the manner. You see that uh, these uh, expressions, I mean, these thoughts are expressed. Now this, once again, usually focuses on the idea of what? Uh, of universality of meaning. That is, I mean, thought or the ideas expressed uh, through meaning, through the deep structure, because the deep structure is universal. So, I mean, thoughts in general, uh, what are universal, but they are expressed differently uh, by different speakers of different natural languages. So, uh, the manner here is different, but the thought itself is uh, the same, is similar, or is identical. So, uh, meanings are mental concepts which have real existence in the mind, as opposed, by the way, to be convenient or theoretical abstraction. Yani, meanings are not uh, things which are abstract. Yani, they are no theoretical abstraction or constraints, but uh, they are what they are mental concepts here. And the, the mind, body, like dichotomy, finally, the uh, mind, body, dichotomy represents what? A particular conception of humanity, conception that is by no means self-evident and universal. Finally, we talk about, uh, you see that here, uh, Halliday's skeptical ideas on the duality of mind and body. For we might quote, I mean, these sentences from Firth. He says that, according to Firth, you see that, well, as we, as we know, as we know so little about mind, uh, mind sorry, and uh, as our study is essentially uh, social, he decided to cease to stop, uh, respect the duality of mind and body, the thought and word. And Firth. Uh, implicitly rejects uh, the idea of what uh, of the duality of mind and body and even the duality of thought and word. The justification is that you see that because of what? Uh, because of, he says that because uh, we know little about mind. Yeah, the mind is something which is mysterious. Well, even this idea, by the way, here, uh, emphasized by Firth and many other linguists, for example, here by even Firth and even by Hassan, they say that the uh, postulation of mental entities is not well justified. Uh, yani by themselves, by nature, they are not uh, well justified, they are not proved and too easily takes linguistics, the other criticism against uh, this sort of duality is that it will because these kinds of duality uh, took linguistics away from its proper concerns when to the physical, biological, social, and semiotic character of language. Regarding Holiday's views uh, on language and reality, you see that he will forwards are first and foremost elements of a text. He talks, he focuses on the idea of text and meaning or discourse is usually identified through text or through context as we have said earlier. Well, that is why here he states that for words are first and foremost elements, elements occurring in actual discourse, not isolated items listed in a dictionary. Yani he, he is talking about the meaning as understood uh, through the context and not as the dictionary meaning. So traditional uh, lexicographers, uh, the point of difference, have separated uh, linguistic knowledge by a process of decontextualization. Yani he is 
uh, now criticizing or uh, his understand is opposite to the idea of decontextualization. And for these traditional Mexicographers trying to describe the meaning of first in isolation from their context, and for him this is inaccurate because meaning is, as we have said, is usually determined by context. So for him then he concludes that, he says that if we could de detach from a word all its links to relevant context, and one we did detach, um, all the relevant context for a particular word, so we should be left with the isolated, unadulterated meaning. 